I want to say welcome to the Q&A Cafe. This is the beginning of the new season for the Q&A Cafe and District Cable Television. I'm happy to have the audience who's here in the room at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel and the audience at home. Um, you'll be watching this show tonight and throughout the, the year and probably up until the next election cycle. And I say that because we're talking politics today with Mark Plotkin. But before we get started, in addition to thanking the Ritz, I want to thank District Cable Television and Georgetown Cupcake who provide the dessert and all the audience because I love them. And Mark, welcome. Well, thank you for I inviting have to keep, me. I know you're, 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 you're champion of the bit. to go. You're so <laughs> raring to go. I mean, because we're, this is an all politics show and uh, we recently had an election and, uh, or a, a, a real off, off year election, I should say, but now we're a year away from midterms. But I just wanted to say that as I watched the returns from the off, off year election and the news kept breaking in from Toronto, I thought, Who did you finally, think of? <laughs> no, I, I thought of Marion Barry. I thought, finally, we're not the only place in the world that had a mayor who's been photographed using crack. <laughs> So um, now we can, you know, we're now we're not alone out there. But, but what was amusing to me on top of is all the Rob Ford stuff is that all the networks and whatever whatever media it was who was showing the Ford thing was once again showing the video of Marion Barry. It just never goes away, does it? No, I mean, um, I was called I a former everything, and I a frequent contributor to Canadian Broadcasting. Company. Perfect. And um, I'm surprised they haven't called, but after there's watching Q&A Cafe, they will. I'm no, sure I'll get a call. But, but, you know, uh, I, I want to thank you, Carol, first of all, uh, because uh, after election day, yeah, uh, there whenever. was really angst. And I have so many brilliant things to say and no venue to say them. Well, here you at, are. Uh, presently. But before I begin, let me be uncharacteristic and acknowledge some people. I know it sounds like a failed politician, it does, it does. It but I like am a failed politician. Office. First, let's start locally. Tip O'Neill said all politics is local. We have in our midst yes. two ANC commissioners, yes. uh, Bill Sterles, where this is his SMD, which is not a sexual Right, over, but this isn't going to be anything it's to the home audience, so he just gets the name shout. Bill yeah. Sterles, Bill and, and uh, uh, joining him is another long-serving, uh, really? highly I venerated, feel like we need to bring big him up on mocker stage. Uh, in the ANC world, uh, Tom Birch. Okay. And then I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my guests at the table, uh, the contractor to the rich and famous, oh and my a wonderful, God. You're going to, you, a you wonderful, know, you can't do everybody. wonderful personal friend, John Richardson, and then to show that I have an international following, yeah. Howard Isaac from the Canadian Embassy, and last but surely not Thanks. least, the uh, the John Dingle of the City Council. Why do I mention John Dingle, the longest serving member? of the D.C. City Council, uh, and I understand he's running for mayor. It's Jack Evans, and he assures me he will not hit up anybody okay. for contributions you mean he won't come, this afternoon. You mean he won't come up and take you off the stage and put on no, the mic? No, well, no, the no. interview is young. You okay, never know. Right. Okay, well, everybody else, we're happy to have you here, too. And <laughs> but anyway, but let me go back to Marion Barry. Because I think he's a perfect starting place to talk about the upcoming mayoral election. We've got, we've got. Oh, is an there an mayoral? Election? We we have we have a D.C. mayor election. April first. Well, really, it is because uh, like 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 New York, um, that when the when the primary happens in D.C., that's basically the election. But tantamount to election. It is. I mean, whoever. Would, well, I mean. <laughs> That's and we won't make any jokes about April Fool's Day. No, we won't no, make, we won't. well, we All can, right. but we'll yeah. wait till then. But um, to what extent do you think Mary and Barry plays a part in this election? What, what, well, what that, power does he well, have? Well, you know, I, uh, first of all, I came to Washington, D.C. It's something autobiographical. This, you'll get a, the asides, uh, Carol, as you know, are better than the uh, actual uh, answers. answers. Oh. So <laughs> a brief aside about Marion Barry. I came to Washington a year before. I know I'm remarkably well preserved, uh, especially people seeing the ball I used to have here uh, from the back. Uh, I came in 1964, and Marion Barry came in 1965. I think uh, I want to tell a brief story, brief. Of, a brief story, but I think it's illuminating. 
when, and it goes to your question. Uh, I was walking around with Drummond Ayers, who was a great reporter for the New York Times, and this was the only election that Marion Barry lost. You remember in 1990, he ran after he came out of jail. Right, but we're, before, we're I can't ahead. remember. Okay. Um, right. For city council right. at large, right. Jack will remember this. Right, right. And um, and uh, he ran as an independent. I he, remember when he ran for the school board and won in 1971, yeah, yeah. first time. Yeah. So he ran at large as an independent against Hilda Mason and who was the other one, Jack? I can't remember. Just anyway, keep going. anyway. Um, we were at a public housing project and Drummond wanted to get the feel of the essential Marion Barry. And he walked in, he followed me into literally a hallway. And he, this was when I was working at WAMU. And he said, Mark, I know you're gonna vote for me. And I said to him, well, Mr. Mayor, you still call him Mr. Mayor, it's the highest elective office he had attained. Why do you, why would you say that? This is really at the nadir of his uh, reputation. And he said, all I've done for you, meaning the media, the, yeah, the, the play. Well, that's and, true. And, uh, and he keeps and, on giving. And I will make a confession. I have never done this, but because I'm so thrilled that you asked me to the Q&A Cafe. In the privacy of the voting booth, I was the one half of 1% in Ward 3 who voted for Marion Barry in 1990. <laughs> well, I thought I this, is, this is the least I can well, do. I hope he's watching. And I know it, he's a fan of the show. But let's get back to what we're talking what about. What, rec what uh, uh, flow does he have? Well, I'm sure Jack and everybody is going to keep him out of every ward. Uh, but they want, it, but Ward 8. Eight. And that they're going to use him uh, strategically. But they want uh, his endorsement, don't they? Well, they want his endorsement in certain places. And in Ward 8, and parts of Ward 7, parts of Ward 5. I mean, there are four, let's be blunt, there are four predominantly black, overwhelmingly okay. black wards. And with African American, he's a folk hero. He's I mean, a folk he's hero. a mythological figure yeah, almost. No, and is. the endorsement means something. So Jack won't fess up and admit it, but he would like Marion Barry to endorse well, him Well, I'm sure Tommy Wells would, I mean, because this is my, we have two, we have two. So far in this election, and I don't know if it's going to change much between now and when the filing deadline comes, I think in January, but, but in the Democratic primary, we have, we have two, two, white, two white candidates. Tommy Wells. Tommy Wells and Jack Evans. And, 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 and a lot of people, for the first time, are saying that maybe a white candidate actually has a shot. Well, well, Jack has a good line, and I don't want to be, he's a friend of 35 years, and I don't want to hurt him by announcing that. Uh, but uh, quite frankly, he has a good answer for that. And you just saw where Mike Dugan, you don't know who that name is, no. an 82% black city, Detroit, just elected a white mayor. Okay, uh, but And he has a good answer for it, and I'm not going to parrot his lines, but it's a good one. And when he has bad answers, I'll say that one. And his line is, uh, uh, he says, look, I'll ask the question, can a white be elected? And he said, uh, not every white candidate can be elected, but I can be elected. And you can create okay, a scenario by which a white person can get elected But in do this they city. need Marion Barry? They don't need Marion Barry to get elected. They don't need Marion Barry, no. yeah. So. It, ha it would help in certain areas. And Marion Barry is going to play, going back to him, is going to play the role that he uh, calls himself yeah. a situationist, a self, which is a wonder, I think he coined that term, a self proclaimed situationist. <laughs> if the situation uh, presents, is, itself. presents itself and he feels and it suits it's him. to his advantage, exactly. he will endorse. If yeah. it doesn't, yeah. he won't. Now, what he'll say is that what he'll say is it depends on what you're going to do for my people. Yeah, and yeah but in Ward 8, he does have coattails. And, but, but, the other, but the other, but the other, the other big issue here, of course, is whether Vince Gray runs. Now, I think most people privately think he's going to run. I know he's told some people I know that he's going to run, and then when I told him that they told me that, he said, "No, I never had that conversation." So it's kind of at that stage right now. But the whole, uh, the whole Merrill race gets um, completely rearranged if he doesn't run, doesn't it? Oh, it sure it, does. It changes yeah. it completely. Right. And then it is, and then it is sort of uh, any. It's a horse race, right? Yeah, I mean, you you look. We don't have not to be too wonky, 
but I think this is important. This is a, this is a wonky interview. This is important. In, no, it, it shouldn't be. This is important <laughs> information. It's not like New York. There isn't a run runoff provision. You don't have to get a minimum of 40%. Uh, Marion Barry, to go back to him in 78, won with 33% of the vote with Walter Washington and Sterling Tucker. Um, I tell the story, which I think uh, has been employed by some uh, candidates, too, about Adlai Stevenson to make a few dated references. The 1952, Carol's going like this, the 1952. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep you well, here. But, but this is a relevant <laughs> story. Um, the, um, the, you're trying to rein me in, Carol. Well. Uh, uh, the, uh, you know, he, he's from Illinois, and I'm from Illinois, and he wrote his own speeches, and he was erudite and witty, and he was actually drafted on the third ballot in Chicago in 52, and everybody was smitten by him, mm -hmm. not enough people, but during the election, people ran up to him and said, Adlai, a governor, governor, every thinking person is with you. To which he responded, yes, madam, but I need a majority. <laughs> uh, so the, the well, point is you don't even need a majority. To a win. simple plurality. Okay. Jack Evans, Tommy Wells, Muriel Bowser, I was say, Rita Lewis can win with, in a four, in Eric Price's. With the right with matrix. Start, with 30% with, with of the vote, with 29%. Muriel Bowser, I yes. wanted, uh, now she's got more money, supposedly, than. No, Jack has more money As Jack now, now As Jack will tell you, okay. repeatedly. Yeah. Jack has, but she has a lot of money. <laughs> yes. Uh, is that enough? Uh, Muriel Bowser, to me, is, um, has a long way to go. Uh, she's not as bad as John Ray, who I call a political Oakland. There was no there there. Mm -hmm. Muriel Bowser is aided by the fact that she is an African-American female in a vote-rich ward. And I think to justifiably, I'm not being a bleeding heart liberal, African-Americans, that's their prize. This mm -hmm. is Chocolate City. This is, this is the main race. So every yes, year. yes, and they don't want to give it up. Yeah. And I think there's identity politics. They should politics. stop moving out of the city. Well, then, right? no, but the point <laughs> is they have a right, and yeah. she makes a very good point about the people who stayed here during the rough times, going back even to the riots, yeah. um, shouldn't be abandoned. And it means something to African Americans uh, not to, uh, to lose the mayor's race. So she's going to get a lot of votes strictly because she is an African American. And believe it or not, there are some white people who are going to vote for Jack Evans and Tommy Wells just because they're white. Nobody says this. Right. But there is racial voting in this city. Four yeah. wards yeah. are predominantly black. Four well, wards are predominantly black. But that's what's going black. to make this race potentially historic. If if the if that racial divide can be crossed in the other direction, and that there'll be black people who vote well, for the white be, candidates. Well, there'll be a small minority of black people who vote for a white candidate, and there will be a small minority of white people who vote so be, uh, the so other you, way. So you think, let's say Vince Gray, because I'm going to get to I didn't this, answer that I'm going to get, well, yeah. get to the scenario of Vince Gray running, but let's say Vince Gray doesn't run. Um, you still think that the that the, the voter the black voters who would vote for a white candidate would be a small, a yes. small group? Yes. Interesting. Yes. But 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 bigger than it might have been in previous years. In previous I, I really uh, I'm not supposed to say a pundit is not supposed to say I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I don't think. Right. Uh, um, I don't know. Um, well, you know, and it's it's. I mean, we won't know until we know what Vince Gray decides, and, and then that's another scenario. Vince Gray will be a formidable candidate, and I thought you were going somewhere else, but let me go there. I think the scenario, if I were Vince Gray, this is what I would do. Everybody know, I've, I've known him since I went to GW. I almost know him for 50 years. He was the president of a Jewish fraternity. I, I like him that. very, very, very much, but having said that, uh, I want to say this, in terms of strategy, he's being investigated by the U.S. Attorney. Right. Ron Machen has said that this campaign um, uh, was riddled with political corruption and that he is going to get to the core of it. Um, Vernon Hawkins, a very close friend, I remember Vernon Hawkins standing in the back of the room when Vince announced Ward 7 uh, against Kevin Chavis, their close friends. Right, right. Uh, uh, two other people who are close friends have pled guilty, along with Hawkins. Uh, everything is bad for him. And, and of course, but, Jeffrey Thompson. So if I were Vince Gray, let me finish. You're worse than I am. No, if, uh, well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm an even match. <laughs> uh, if, if I were Vince Gray, I would take out petitions 
which uh, you can take out, I think, Friday. Then I would collect the signatures, uh, and I would turn in the signatures. And By if, the deadline. And, and I hope he isn't charged. And if he, and then I would use that status as an active candidate for mayor, let's be realistic, as a bargaining chip with the U.S. attorney if he chose, and I hope he doesn't, for the city and for him, if they chose to indict him. Why do I say that? There's a precedent. The precedent is Kwame Brown, the city council chairman, who was indicted on one count, but immediately that day had to leave office. Right. He was publicly but, humiliated. But so that's what I think. Gray, Gray has the, his candidacy, Carol, it seems to me, I'm, I'm, it sounds crass, but I think it's, it's, it's true, is the only leverage he has but, with the U.S. But attorney. But see, I think there's a scenario in which he gets indicted and he still runs. Well, some people... And, and I, I wonder if in this city, if maybe that's entirely possible. Well, this is, we're going back to Marion Barry, we're mentioning his name too often. No, but this he is exists, a, This is the Marion Barry strategy, yeah, well. is take me to trial. Now, I sat in that trial every day. And what happened in the end? He was convicted of one count. It wasn't a felony. It was a misdemeanor. He went to jail for six months, went to two different jails. There was some problems yeah, yeah, at one. There was some extracurricular issues. activities yeah, 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 yeah. at one. And he came back. He, re he got elected in Ward 8. And then in 1904, 1994, the greatest political Lazarus ever, exactly. he got elected but, mayor. But, but see, so but, maybe he'll take that, but I doubt it. I, I talked to um, Mayor Gray during the shutdown, which you, you got to admit was a good moment for him. And uh, he, he performed well. He looked good during that, don't you think? Oh, I think he performed very well. And even Jack, mm -hmm. who is very earnestly running, lauds his record. Yeah. I think he's been a good and mayor. This, and, the, and so He's um, smart. He's conscientious, unlike the former mayor who wasn't that smart and well, wasn't that He wasn't liked. Wasn't that He was approved of, but not liked. And this mayor, and I have to, wait, Carol, I have to act in Carol. In I'm character. listening to you. I have to act in Carol. This mayor, I want to applaud, and I wish the other candidates who are watching this faithfully uh, would take this. I wish you, we've been 15 minutes, and I haven't mentioned this issue. We are second-class citizens. We're not going to go into yes, statehood here. We are. No, we will at the end. No, we, no, we, no, 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 no because no, this, this is, is a good... No, because I want to talk about things that will happen, Mark. I don't want to no, talk about... No, that's that. the problem, Well, Carol. but not... not that's this the is problem. my show. I don't want... Wait, wait. <laughs> but I do want to say this. I know that... I know you're all in for statehood, but that'd be like spending the whole show on the Redskins. Well, no, no we're, well, that's a good line. <laughs> yeah. You would no. get, get points for that. But I'm going to bring up that one of the points that should be made, I'll make it more generically, is that I wish all candidates wouldn't view it like you as some dreamy utopian idea, but it's, rather it's, what just No, I'm a what, realist. What, no, don't be a realist. I look at the Congress don't, we have. Don't be a, don't be a realist. Well, you, you just got to dream, I only man. have 45 minutes you in which to dream. do this show. But, 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 but I'm just saying, he's talked about this issue. And I think people like Jack Evans, Tommy Wells, and Muriel Bowser should talk about our humiliating yeah, well, condition. And they will. But, you know, I mean, you know, I could say, OK, which is going to happen first? Meaningful, from our Congress, our United States Congress, meaningful gun control legislation or statehood for DC? Well, that, Probably meaningful gun control legislation. You, you can elect a president, and I don't want this to pass. You can elect a president who gives a damn about the city rather than yeah, this well, president. I know, but okay. And Congresses can change. I want to talk about some other people. All right. uh, what difference could David Catania make if None. he runs? None. So <laughs> will he run? He probably, I think he's an egomaniac uh, that would be terrible for the city. How's that for I guess. Gander? I guess you're not and, a big, okay. Uh, and, <laughs> and I hope he runs and is humiliated. Uh, he's a grandstander, he's a smart guy, he's a conscientious council member, uh, but his whole essence, his whole being is motivated by personal advancement and uh, quite, quite uh, uh, realistically, he has absolutely no chance. Mm -hmm. The Democratic nominee, there are 357,000 Democrats. Uh, they are not going to give up. The, uh, there are three things in life. Uh, death taxes, and D.C. will go Democratic. And that's it. That, so David yeah, Catania yeah. should uh, spare us 
and yeah. not even run. He has Walter Mitty fantasies. Who are our voters? You know, you always hear a lot about, like, just in the recent Virginia race, you were hearing a lot about the impact of women in getting um, Terry McAuliffe elected. But who are the voters in D.C.? For a mayor's how, race? Yeah, how do they break down? I mean, who are the people who vote? Well, the people that vote are uh, about their, uh, Jack has said uh, for, uh, he can win with 45,000 votes. There are about 130,000 people of the 357,000 Democrats who vote in the Democratic primary. That doesn't seem to change. Uh, about do they know. tend to be long-term residents? Do they tend to be older or no, younger? They're Is it older. truly mixed? They're older. Is it an equal division of men and women? Well, uh, it's a better question. What is the racial breakdown? What, yeah. I think it's about 44 or 45% white turnout. It'll probably be higher. You touched upon something. These young millennials, is that yeah. what they're called? Well, they're, uh, yeah, millennials are young. Yeah, yeah. Um, which are gro coming into the city, yeah. 1,200. Th I haven't met thousand, any of them. 1,000, 1,000 a thousand month. I haven't met any of them. I'm sure they I work exist. with, uh, I work with, uh, you know, 30 of them every I, day. I wish they would start becoming active or at least politically cognizant. They know which restaurant to go to on 14th yeah, but Street, I know, but, I know, but I don't I know if they, they have any feel well, for this place and whether they're going to participate. And let me point out another thing, and they have a tendency, this goes to your question, most of my answers don't, but this goes <laughs> to your question. They seem to vote, they seem to register as independents, which that means, mm -hmm. wait, wait. I'm a that, registered independent. No, but that means you've forfeited mm -hmm. any opportunity to influence the election. Uh, it, it shouldn't be that way. I think there should be open primaries. I think independents right. should be allowed to vote in the nominating process. But we have closed primaries. So all Democrats, so you see lines at quadrennally at the presidential elections of all these, there are 80,000 independents, there are about 25,000 Republicans, and independents don't shape this city because they're excluded from voting in primary. Okay, so what you're saying in is that in the Democratic primary, it'll be an established, older voting population. That has been, make, that's been the So you the can, you can do past. like Jack and go to the corner of 14th and Q in front of the diplomat to announce your campaign. Well, it is in, in his heart, ward. It, well, it is in his ward, but it's also in the heart of, you know, the, the youthful center of the city. But it may not be... It may not be the ticket. Look, look, elections in this election in Virginia, we haven't got to. All elections are turnout elections. It's yeah. who shows up That's what uh, I'm asking on you. election day. Yeah. And it reminds me of my own elections, which in 82, <laughs> when it, in 18 Are we getting there? Hold it, because these are good lines and I want to use it. And, uh, and, no, and, but you have and, a mirror, and, don't you? In, in 18, I got 18% of the vote. And a friend said, don't feel so bad, Mark. That was the quality vote. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I was late in, in conceding to Polly Shackleton. And so I said I was waiting for the farm vote to come okay. in. Uh, in 86, okay. I ran. I almost won. And I said, the people have spoken. This is a Dick Tuck line, former Georgetown resident. The people have spoken, the bastards. So it, turned, it depends. <laughs> Who turns out on that day? Okay, but I, but I was at, I'm, that's Karen, what I was, that was my word. question. We have a new word called analytics. I just learned this word a few weeks. And this is a legacy of Obama, which is really just yeah. your business, a targeting mechanism. Find out who is to vote, make sure you identify them, and get them to vote. My former campaign manager, but this Paul city Donaldson, is, is here. He this, failed this to do that. This city is, is in a transformative phase. It is becoming a very different city than any of us who have lived here a long time knew it to be. The, the next mayor has, whoever, the, whoever it may be, um, if it's a reelected Vince Gray, if it's one of the other candidates, could be overseeing uh, an amazing um, era in the history of the city, regardless of something like you know the vote, because what's happening in the city, the way it's changing, the way the racial demographics are changing, the way the age demographics are changing, it's becoming a whiter, richer, yeah. more educated city. Developers are becoming a kind of rock star because they're changing the face of the city. 
And all of a sudden, it gets talked about in the same sentences with Brooklyn and Austin. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, Nat Gandhi, the departing chief financial officer. There is more cons commercial construction here in this city than anywhere in the world. It's becoming a fun place yeah. to live. Now, it's completely separate from Congress and the White House. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. like they're a separate Yes, entity. that's right. And location, location, location. Yeah, yeah, but I think what is underestimated, I'll, go, I'll try to be relevant and go back to the mayor's race. I think what Jack's here, so he should hear this, and I've said it to him uh, but, bef but before. We, but, we, but you're talking to Tommy and Muriel yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and Vincent. That I think all these people underestimate what Bill de Blasio did in New York City, where he talked about income disparity. Not everybody is leaving who's been here for a lot of right. time. Not everybody is doing well. And this isn't just the bleeding heart liberal. No, that, no this, that's this true. This talks about, you know, Robert Reich made a film about it, about income inequality. And there are people that are sensitive to people who at least are aware of the economic disparities. Yeah. I know this sounds like my grandmother underneath this mink coat beats a communist heart. But uh, uh, the point is, this is an issue. Yeah. And I think all the candidates, uh, with the exception of Bowser, who's making it on racial terms, should be cognizant of. Um, let me bring up another name, Robert Bob. He had been talked about yeah. as maybe being interested city in running. Right, right, former city. But then I heard that maybe he's thinking of running for city council chair. Is he? Is he, is he up to what anything? What I've heard is that he's not going to run for mayor. There's another name that is similar in terms of genre, right. and it's Eric Price, right. who was uh, in the Williams administration, not as charismatic, right. not as colorful and outspoken, but, uh, but a low key, sort of a Tony Williams uh, mold. Right. Uh, and uh, he's thinking of running. As for mayor. For mayor. But Bob is not. But I'm, OK, well, then let me just And Bob take, had also been president of the school board. Right, So right, he had been right, elected right, to something. Right, right, and, and people like him. Um, uh, but the city council chairman position, is Phil Mendelson not planning to run to keep it? Well, yeah, I mean, he's he's going to be, I mean, I've known Phil for 35 years. And OK. Phil, Phil the quiet, is a, The is, quiet council quiet chair. Is the accidental council chair. <laughs> OK, but. I mean, Phil is a nice enough guy, but has, you know what Gene McCarthy said? Uh, that Mondale had the soul of a vice president. He has the soul of a staffer, okay. uh, Phil Mendelssohn. So, but what's Phil going to do? Just pray to God and get down on his knees and say, how did this ever happen to oh, me? Oh, dear. Um, so who, 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 who are we looking at as the possible next city council chair? I don't know. I mean, it's, Does he's, he Orange just gets want to by. Go for that? Well, Vince Orange runs for everything. Yes, yeah, well, so but. I'm, so I'm sure he'll run for that. <laughs> Well, it's interesting about Mendelssohn because he, um, well, I'm going to get off DC politics. I just wanted to ask one more, um, one more couple of questions. Who among the media who cover um, the city and the race do you think do the best job? If people wanted to know who they should follow, you know, that who has the best sources, who they should read, who really does have what's He's really going on. He's sitting right here. Well, but. <laughs> well, but <laughs> I'm, it's a predictable but, response. Yes, so I know. Except, I've pissed off all my colleagues. That's another subject so, that we'll get so to. So I don't think I'm really an accurate But uh, do, is there somebody you there? read and you, when you read them Colby, and you go? Colby King. Colby King, just because he is a native Washingtonian. He never left this city. He worked for a Republican senator, mm -hmm. Mac Mathias. He worked for Riggs Bank. He worked for Pepco. He, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, a writer. He is obligatory reading uh, on Saturday. And Colby is of this place. And people talk to him. And so if he, says, if he, to if he says something, he's you know, the, oh, here's the, all the dated references. I am really so damn old. He is the Walter Lippmann, for those. Okay, yeah, that, I don't even Colby know who that group, is. but um, uh, yeah. Of DC. Okay. And you should read him. And people respect him, right. and justifiably so. That's easy. Uh, it, Sherwood used to be very good. He is now a feature of TV. Mm -hmm. He was an excellent uh, print 
uh, uh, post report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, faded glory. As we know, the reality is most people get their news from TV, and now, of course, increasingly Twitter and whatever else what is, is that? online. Twi <laughs> what is your thing with social media, by the way? What What is this? What is? What, why don't you? Why don't you use email? Why don't you? Tweet? No, I do have email. Just barely. I have email, right, John? Just Richardson? barely. Yes. No, no, no. Why? 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 Because What's I believe, and this sounds so self-serving, but I'll say it anyway. If I want to talk to you, Carol, I pick up the phone. I believe in personal communication. But Somebody, I might be driving hold, hold when it, you call. Hold it. I'm not for convenience. I'm not for efficiency. I'm for interpersonal relationships. Okay. Mary and Barry, somebody was nice enough to say that, and I'll give another pack on my own back since no one else will, said, you're the first speaker here who's gone to every table and shook hands with everybody beforehand. Whoa. I don't know if that's true that's or false. That's not true. But all right, then it's not true. But the point of it is, but I, it's a nice thing I to believe do. in face to face. Yes. And I believe in verbal communication. Okay. Well, just, well, let me finish. In terms, it's you're like still being not interviewed. answering my question. It's like by, being interviewed by me. It's no, really no, irritating. You don't, you don't uh, answer my question. Uh, uh, I am mechanically deficient. Okay, that's an answer. Uh, I am uh, set in my ways. Okay. And I, my mechanical aptitude uh, is zero. And I won't learn, and I'm stubborn and defiant. And I try to overcome that by, and I want to talk about this, by if you want to talk, if you want to communicate with someone, talk to them. Talk to them on the phone or go see them in person and look them in the eye or read their inflection on the phone. I don't believe in this other crap. Well, I would just say that in, in, as a political commentator and one who experiences a lot of angst in wanting to talk about politics, Twitter would provide you such a marvelous opportunity just to... I think it's dumbing down the discourse. Oh, God, well, and I, I think the people who do it, such as Mark Seagrave... <laughs> oh, the first applause. Feel free to <laughs> applaud. Uh, people like Mark Seagrave, Seagrave's my former colleague, who are obsessed with this. Yeah. It's supposed to replace real substance in reporting. Well, and I think it's crap. Well, I, th I just think it's a, it's a well, there, that's the last word on Twitter. Um, let's, uh, I want to I spend a few minutes on the Virginia governor's race, which happened recently. And it, when, it, when it was all over and uh, Terry McAuliffe was on the stage, it reminded me, and now here I'm going to make a reference into the past. It reminded me of the last line in the movie The Candidate. I knew you were going to say, where, now what do we do? Now what do we do? Because I I'm just... I'm sure he's asked himself that. Because, you know, I mean, not taking nothing away from Terry McAuliffe, he's not a professional office holder. He's a professional many other things. And so I'm curious, what, what is his governorship going to be like? Is, it, is, he there for, is he there for Hillary? I mean, what's... No, he's there for himself. He's there Beats for... me. I'm sure he's answering himself the same questions. Uh, I... I've known Terry McAuliffe, this sounds very inveterate name dropping, but I think everybody here uh, has, knows, has, has, some, has con been, right. some contact with him. And um, um, I've written a piece, which I hope the Post will accept, uh, for Sunday, uh -huh. this is a shameless plug, in Local Opinions, which is near the obit in the metro section, right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm still glad to get some space, and I outline why he, why he, can we talk about briefly why he won rather than, because I have no idea what he's going to do for gov as governor. I will say this about He almost him. didn't win. He, yeah, I, I will say this for him. He has the same, uh, but not the same smarts in any dimension, but the same sort of pragmatic operating style as Bill Clinton. I'm not going to say Mark Warner because I refuse to say anything nice about Mark Warner. Um, but, but, Mark, to give you an idea, you won't, but I have to illustrate because I'm getting a uh, thing. Stick with Terry McCall. No, but I want to get back because there's a difference. I asked Mark Warner about the subject I'm not supposed to talk about, statehood, and he put his hand over the microphone. This is really an example of political courage and said, if you stop asking me about it, I'll be for it. Now, maybe no, many that's people a good one. I like, like that. that response. I like but, that. But, but of course you do. <laughs> but, but I will give Terry, cre Terry credit over Mark Warner, who the millionaire mansion holder in Alexandria, Mark Warner, who made himself... Terry McAuliffe's the, not a poor man. Well, ma wait, made himself the bluegrass 
uh, yeah. uh, bluegrass a uh, race car, yeah. uh, gun-toting conservative to get elected. At least McAuliffe didn't transform himself and become a Myra Breckenridge uh, okay. to get elected. But Terry, Terry uh, preempted the field, first of all. There was Tom Perriello, a congressman from Charlottesville who lost, would have been a very attractive candidate. A guy, uh, a House of Delegate, uh, Ward Armstrong, who got redistricted. For, for, first of all, he got nominated without any opposition. Yeah. Then he did what he does very well, and you can't take that away from him, is he raised $35 million. This reputation mm -hmm. is well, being, he, 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 It is sort of what he knows how a to do. Yeah. And he used that money to portray Ken Cuccinelli as sort of a modern day Barry Goldwater without charm. Should and Cuccinelli have, um, have run instead against Mark Warner? No, Mark Warner probably can beat anybody. Oh, I see. So but this was the better. The problem the Republicans did, and I was at the convention in Richmond, is they nominated their candidate by convention. You get, to use the Jewish word, all the Meshuganas, all the crazy. But they've always done all that. The, no, not. They've had primaries. They've, okay. And so you have 10,000 right wing, rabid, partisan conservatives that think they reflect the population of the state. Virginia, Carol, doesn't even have party registration. There's no Democrats or Republicans. So what Cuccinelli did, and then E.W. Jackson, who was disastrous and unelectable, and Mark Obenshain, we don't know whether he's won or not, well, but the Republican the Party sent a picture to moderates and independents, you're not welcome, we don't want your vote. Right. And so if they are, they've now elected Democrats. Three of the last four governors have been Democrats. Two United States senators are Democrats, and Eisenhower won Virginia in 52 and 56. Johnson won it in 64, it took four years. Oh, Clinton didn't win Virginia twice. Obama's won it twice. Mm -hmm. Don't nominate your candidates in a convention. Bill Bowling would have easily but, 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 but they did. Would have beaten could, McCall. But, but could could what could have been done differently for Cuccinelli to win though? Uh, Cuccinelli, I think, because uh, it came so close. Some people were saying, some of his supporters were saying that had the had the party establishment think, come out for him, it would have. Yeah, he could have been competitive. McCall raised 15 million But the, million the Tea Party dollars. drove them away, right? Well, yeah, and then he decided, look, this is an off-off year election. Off-off, right. And that means older, whiter, mm -hmm. more conservative people vote. All right. Having said that, he could have tried to get moderates and independents. At the end, he was recruiting Ted Cruz and Rand Paul. And then yeah, I think I they say libertarians, this guy Sarvis, who got 6% of the mm -hmm. vote, they say it's split both ways. I don't think it's split both ways. I think if Sarvis, especially with the margin now, people who were libertarian, who voted for Sarvis, I think their second choice would definitely Cuccinelli. Cuccinelli would have won if Sarvis hadn't been How often do newly elected governors begin with their favorable favorability rating in the low 30s? In the low 30s? What? In the low 30s? Who? Is that what Ma McCall? They, they both, both that for both oh, uh, yeah. Cuccinelli and well, McCall. They, they were well, both in the low 30s. People didn't vote. Democrats, uh, another key constituency was women. He won by eight points, supposedly. Mm -hmm. I think he probably won by more. And abortion was a big issue. And McAuliffe successfully scared the hell out of women for right. voting for somebody they felt was an extremist, and that was Ken Cuccinelli. Well, will Maryland go? Will Maryland turn out as tight as Virginia, or do you I think th so. You think in the and Brown, so? It'll yeah. tighten up, and it'll become yes. more serious. Kansas has been running uh, for eight years. Not the campaign he wanted to have right yeah, now. Yeah, but, but there was a good story today that discredited one of the troopers. So right, that might right, help. Right. Don't yeah, underestimate uh, Gansler. He also will raise more money than Anthony Brown, and he's been working at this for eight years mm -hmm. as Attorney General. And again, uh, sort of like D.C., the Republican candidate's not really an issue. There is no Republican there party is no Republican. in Maryland. There's no Tea Party in Maryland. The last Republican governor was who? Before Bob Earl. You, you know those Spiro things. Spiro T. Agnew, no, you who know ran those as things. a liberal. Yeah, I know that's, that's the kind Georgia, of... Against Georgia, home is your castle, Mohammed. Um, the Redskins issue. 
And um, I'm only saying, I, I actually don't believe in using the name myself. I, I have a little uh, phrase I like to use, you know, no, no name change, no Super Bowl. But uh, it's not going to go away. It's, it, I think it was David uh, Grosso who, who was putting the, well, the measure through the passed, council passed, passed, passed. who said it's become a movement, yeah. and, and it has. And um, I, I, you know, it has become political, you know, which is why I'm bringing it up here. Um, it's, it's, it, it just boggles my mind why they don't just... Well, Dan Snyder is, is just... Um, a bad guy. Well, he's and, causing, and, but he's and, causing, uh, you know. There's no other way to well, but, put it. But what's happening is the name stink used to it, just be not, on him. Well, wait, wait. And it, now it's and now it's spreading around the team, and soon it'll spread around the city. No, but but he is, uh, he, as the commissioner said, it is his ultimate decision. I can't think of a more unpopular person, and he's becoming even more unpopular, and he seems to revel in it. I think in the end, he will be forced to do it. But uh, by but then, there's so much damage. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't seem to care. It's. Uh, He's tone deaf. But does the does the city does the city have any leverage? Is there anything he wants from DC? Yeah, yeah. He wants to move back. Does into he really the city. want to I move wish back? Wish Jack in? hadn't left. But he he he. Need, Jack is trying to get. What did you say that made him go? <laughs> uh, he told me he was going to leave. Uh, the the uh, interview stays. wasn't compelling enough. You know, he never uh, stays. Um, oh, the, I think it's been compelling. Um, um, he wants to move into he the really city. He really does. And th what they have to say is, yes, we'll tear down RFK. You can move in the city, but you're not going to move into the city uh, until you change the name. Yeah. So that's yeah. their leverage. Um, speaking of the Redskins, Dexter Manley was on WTOP, and he recently got let go from WTOP. And when that happened, I thought of you, because you had an episode with WTOP a few years ago where you used to work. And is, 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 is WTOP just a completely intransigent place? Well, I'll speak about that. Yeah, and, please do. Uh, about what happened at WTOP. Um, the very next day, and I want to thank Phil Metlin at Fox News, not the very same, this very same day, mm -hmm. I was the political analyst at, and he didn't care mm -hmm. what happened at WTOP. When you were, you were both the political analyst at Fox and yeah. at WTOP, And he said, well, come right. over here, and now you're our political analyst. Was this analyst. three years ago? Yeah, two yeah, and a okay. half years yeah. ago. And I'll say for the first time what happened there. Uh, I yelled at an inanimate object, uh, an elevator, because it didn't work. I have a bad oh. temper. Uh, there was a maintenance person who was at the elevator, and he felt it was directed at him. In no way was it directed at him. I was, this is, you know, right. just something that happened. Random rage. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of putting it. But I'll tell you what was underlined, which I'll say for the first time. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, electronically, I said it right. for the beacon. There were two things that happened at, at TOP that uh, I think provided a reason, and I'm not trying to sound like Edward R. Murrow. This is an actual occurrence. Mm -hmm. One is I said that the uh, learners were terrible owners. Of the Nationals. Of the Nationals. I grew up in Chicago with Bill Veck, who was my idea of a And you said this on the air, I take it. I, d I did award-winning commentaries. You only have to win one award to be an award-winning <laughs> commentary. And I said they were terrible owners. This is when they were having their function, you remember, in Prince George's mm -hmm. County. And it was mind-boggling to me that the baseball team of Washington should have a function for their fans, not in the place where they reside. And Bill Vec, I'm sorry, was a high standard to me. After I did the commentary, I never used to hear from the vice president of programming for any of my commentaries, I had literally forgotten that conveniently WTOP carried the Nationals. This yeah. is alienating your sponsor. Now, there's supposed to be a firewall. And I didn't represent the views of WTOP. I represented just personally. That was one thing. They were upset with that, very upset with that. Second, I went after Comcast. Do they carry this, uh, mm -hmm. this provision? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll tell you this, uh, this. And I'd like to stay on the air, yeah. but, you know. Well, I'm, maybe I shouldn't finish. I, I'm a, maybe no, I shouldn't I'm, finish I'm, the story. I'm, I'm, you know, this is a free forum. They, uh, this sounds Nader-esque and maybe minuscule, 
But I was a Comcast subscriber. And on their bill, they said, please pay by. Well, that wasn't the billing date. You had to turn the bill upside down, and it said you could pay 30 days later. Well, I did one commentary about that. I did two commentaries about that. And then, then I brought in, hold it, the cable regulator. Okay. Now that now that's getting serious. This is after trying to call them in Philadelphia and never getting And this is all response. before the elevator incident. Yes. And what happened there is the cable regulators directed them in the counties, Arlington, Alex, mm -hmm. uh, Fairfax, DC, and Maryland to change the bill because it was misleading and deceptive. This was to get the money. Uh, I was pulled into the office and told that you have just cost us $500,000 in advertising, and that Comcast had pulled all their advertising, and that would I please cease and desist. I said, I will cease and desist because I've already accomplished the objective. They've changed the bill. So I think that provided an atmosphere for them uh, to seize an episode that was unfortunate. But was the episode for which you got fired a one-off? It had nothing like that had happened before? There were other displays yeah. of anger. Right. Uh, but So you weren't helping yourself any? Yes, but, but they were looking for an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this opportunity, I think, more than anything, look, it's, they call it a business, the news business. It is the business. It is a business. It is a business. And they felt I was costing them money. Um, Jim Farley sent me a, an email this oh, morning. Really? I'm sorry, email wasn't a phone conversation, but he said it was never personal. Although I haven't run into him, I still consider him a friend and colleague. Yeah, Jim Farley, I had a rough health period. He was absolutely wonderful to me. And if people don't know Jim Farley, he's the is, vice president of news. He, he is WTOP. And, he and created the Glass Enclosed North Center. And, <laughs> and he recruited me and hired me, mm -hmm. but it was 10 years, and relationships and alliances sour. I think also Jim soured on uh, politics, even in this Washington city. Yeah. And I'll tell another story. There was a consultant who came in, and he said, TOP has got to get away from political coverage. People in this area, I thought it was crazy. This is a political place. Don't care about politics. And Farley turned around and went like this, pointing at me, you. meaning that what he created, he, this is a man who we said, We only have a you, minute. Uh, this man put us on the map. We only have a minute, so. Uh, I want to get in. This, this, this is my show. Um, this, you, uh, you promised I me. I know, but let me just say, when this started, um, you, I, I had written in my blog that you were um, with Fox and that you'd been WTOP, and then you said, well, no, I'm not anywhere right yes, now. Yes, yes, I'm at large. So I wanted, well, I wanted to at least end by giving you a moment to just, you know, maybe make an advertisement for yourself. No, I don't want to make any advertisement. I, <laughs> I, mean, had, are, I had a, a good career, if nothing but ever But you were happens. a political commentator. Don't political commentators have to commentate? I guess, you know, you go out to pasture. What is it, uh, <laughs> General MacArthur? I'm going to end with this, because this is really what I am more than a commentator. I want, when people say something, to get it wide dissemination. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, if you remember anything, I hope you'll remember this is the chairman of the Democratic right, National yeah. Committee. She's written a book. She was hawking her book at polit Politics of Prose, which is her prerogative. Mm -hmm. I asked her about the issue you don't want to talk about, right. not statehood. I really asked her about voting representation. This is the leader of the oldest organized party in the history of Western civilization, supposedly who cares about voter suppression. And this person said, oh, I didn't talk about it at the Jewish community setting, voting rights and first class citizenship, and I didn't talk about it here because it's not a national issue. Is this is the chairman, wait, let me finish, please. I know who she this is. is the chairman know, of we're the, out of time. Good, the Democratic <laughs> National Committee. What, isn't there a way you could find a paying job in going after statehood, maybe? Well, maybe, uh, oh, that's, we'll, we'll end on a light note. Ralph Nader <laughs> called me when I wrote a letter that was about Michelle Obama and how great she is and how wonderful she is and she hasn't said a word about her second class citizenship. 
He said, we need to go to some rich people and underwrite a movement for statehood. Hold it. So go. he suggested one person, and I'm appealing to him. And here's the thing. We should go to David Rubenstein under one condition. We say that we'll name the state after him. There you go. David Rubenstein. 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 Well, Mark, th thank you very much. Thank it's been a lot of fun, me. as I knew it would thank be. You. Thank and you for uh, uh, keep in touch. Let us know where you are, where you're commentating. Thank All right, you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you at the next show. <laughs> <laughs> See. Yeah,